All right, so we are going to take you through a little bit of a how-to on our chosen programs. So with me, obviously, uh, VSDC, however, I have done it on Capwing. So um, you can do it virtually through Capwing, which you see right here, and it's an online video editor. The format of it looks a lot different from your typical like iMovie, Final Cut, things like that. Um, so when you're editing times, it just you have to get used to it. It's a little different, um, but it's cool because you can make grids um, and you can edit audio and you can add cool text effects. And it's um, yeah, it's just a, it's a pretty simple layout. Mm -hmm. So I have made stuff on Capwing. However, my preferred is a VSDC video editor, which again is a free thing for PC. Um, and so the way I started off is by making a grid. And so um, in this example that James and I have put together, it's four videos of us. So I have to make it manually. Um, and I go to, where is the shapes? Oh, I go to the left and I have to add a rectangle and make a rectangle. Um, and I typically like changing the colors and stuff. So I right click and go to properties. And then I change the color or I change the background to transparent. Um, and then I change the actual border color color to white. And then I change the thickness of it so that you can see it a little bit more. Um, and then in order to divide it, I have to manually make lines as well. So you click the line on the left, you click OK, and then you make a line. Um, and you right click it to make it a little thicker. And then you can also move it around. Um, you'll see there's a blue line that just popped up and that's like the center line. So it's kind of a way to figure out where to snap it. Uh, and then I make another one this way and it's already on the blue line and boom. Yep. <laughs> there's your, uh, there's your grid. So once you've made your grid, um, then you can upload your videos and resize them to fit in here. So the way you do that is you go to your left menu again, you find the add video button, click that. And um, this is in here. So here's me, click okay. And then you just click and drag to make it smaller and fit. And then once you have everything in, all of these will be filled up and you can, um, uh, you can chop and splice to make sure that all the videos start when they're supposed to start. So eventually, it'll look like this. Yay. Yeah. Yep. And once all the videos um, are put all together, you can keep the border or you can delete the border um, depending on just your style choosing. Um, so basically I had to cut and splice uh, to make sure that all the audio tracks lined up. Oh, and we did, this is our cover of Careless Whispers. <laughs> um, I should have known better than cheating friends. Cool. So, um, the cool thing that I like to do is I like to fade in. Oh my God. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> um, 
Um, so uh, when different videos in the grid are coming up, um, fade-ins are usually a common thing to do. So in order to do a fade-in, so Sexy Saxman did not fade in. He just kind of popped up. As he does. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe I should not fade in because he just shows up. Those are the art, your artistic uh, license. <laughs> artistic license. Take control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So what you do is you click the video file. Um, and then you go to video effects on the top left. And you go to transparency. And you click fade in. Um, and you click OK. And then this is how long the fade in is going to be. But you can make longer or shorter, however you want to do it. And then it should fade in. There you go. All right, fade it in. Right um, however, as you can hear, some of these uh, audio files are a little louder than the other, or maybe the balance is a little off. So um, after you've lined up all the videos, you're also going to uh, want to edit the sound. Um, so there's two different ways that you can do this with this program. If you're just wanting to edit the volume and like not add any reverb or anything like that, you um, click the video again and you go to the properties window, which is on the right, and you can scroll down and there's the audio stuff right here. Um, so you can make this lower. Um, and then if you want to change another one, let's say, so my synth was pretty loud, so I click the synth, and I click properties again, and then I'm going to lower myself, and let's see how that sounds. I should have known better than she had a friend. So that's how you edit just the volume, if that's all you want to do. But let's say you want to edit the entire thing and make it sound more like a um, polished sound. Um, you go to uh, X, well, it's a little complicated. <laughs> so um, over here on the left side, there's little eyeballs. And that basically is like if, it's, if the track is seen or not. So you have to do this one by one, but you have to hide the tracks until you're left with one track. So this is just my vocal track. And then you have to go to export project. And then you'll see it says video track and audio track. You have to right click the auto track and click export audio. Make sure you use areas of delete is um, clicked. And then you choose your output format. Uh, you can choose your frequency, you can choose if you want it in mono or stereo, um, and then you can change the name of it if you want, and then you click uh, export, and then it'll be exported. The use areas of deletion, is that so in case it's, there's nothing at the beginning, it keeps mm -hmm. it in time? keeps everything the same length, okay. yeah. That makes yep. Sense. Like in GarageBand. Yeah, like in GarageBand. So you export it. Um, oh, dang it, it already exists. Okay, let's just say I exported it. All right. You exported it. I exported it. So um, you can see these uh, files, these different MP3 files here. And then once you've, all right, stop it. <laughs> all right. And then once you've exported it, basically you find your DAW of choice. So for me, it is um, Acoustica Mixcraft, which is also a Windows thing. Um, and it looks a lot like GarageBand. Uh, and then you put all the files into here and you can change all the volumes. You can throw in some reverb. I like throwing reverb onto, um, onto my vocals. Um, so I like this preset and then uh, I'll probably put the guitar down a little bit, add some compression onto that. Um, and then let's listen to what it is. 
I should have known better than cheat a friend and waste a chance that I... Cool. And then you heard the click in the beginning from my obnoxious mouse. So you can also do a fade in on all of these so that you don't hear that. Um, and then you export it. Or hold on, you save it. Hold on, there you go. Okay, then you save it. Uh, you mix it down to an MP3. Um, VB demo. And then it's, uh, and then you go back to your editor. Um, and you click music and add in the auto file. Oh, oops. <laughs> ah, you gotta drag it to a different track. And then also you're going to want to mute your video, um, your video audio so that it doesn't overtake uh, the MP3 you just made. So you do that by going to properties and then, um, and then when it says audio track, you go to this arrow right here and then you click don't use audio. So you do that for all of the videos and then at the end, should I show them the final product? Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it. Okay. At the end, after you've done all of these edits and taken a lot of time, <laughs> um, I need a, there it is. Okay. Uh, hold on. At the end, let me drag it over, Phil. So let me drag it over. There you go. At the end, this is what you get. This is what you get. <laughs> I should have known better than cheat a friend and waste a chance that I've been given. So I'm never gonna dance again the way I danced with you. That's the final product that you get. It was a little sloppy with the video placements, but you have time to edit that. That's the beauty. So that was my process. That was good. I, that, you, once you, you know, kind of get it down, if you're well organized, um, you can pound it out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's getting to that point where I think you're comfortable with that program and what program you're with. Um, I think getting that comfortable does take time. Um, so at first, yeah, at first it, it will take a little bit of time, but you know, just keep making those videos and you know, you'll be able to do it very quickly. Definitely. And easily. And you'll find that I think there's a, you know, much like our other um, chats about making videos, I think like making it, you know, there's, there's, I think for you and for me, like I, I get, I, it's fun. Like I enjoy that process as, as, um, Maybe tedious for some people, but it's it's fun to do that because it's this building sculpture type thing. Mm -hmm. And then when you get in the zone, yeah. it's just time just goes yeah. by. It's like oh, it's dark out. It's the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, All right Jane, walk I us will through. show you on Final Cut. Um, so for me. Um, I would start off, we, we, you start with a blank template. Um, and what I usually do is add the first track. Oops, that's the final one, sorry. Add the first track as well as a grid. Um, now what I've done bef um, ahead of time, and um, what I've been using for a while is I, I made, oh, you can't see it because it's black on black. Um, ahead of time, I've made um, in Photoshop um, or any video or photo, photo editor, I made 
this grid and I saved it separately. So anytime I need this four square grid, I have like a 10 one and a couple other one. Um, I've saved it as a .png file, um, not a JPEG. Uh, so that way when it gets imported, anything that is in the picture um, is used and anything that's just the background or white usually is just ignored and used as blank space. So um, I put that on top um, and I added Gabby's track in like that. Um, and then I just went through a similar process of adding the different tracks um, on top of each other. And then in Final Cut, you use this transform tool um, and you can either drag by the corners or what I usually do um, to get it exact is I just scale it to 50% um, in this four square grid. If you have different size grids, um, that, that way I just make every square the same um, for continuity or consistency, I guess. Um, I put them all in what square I want them to go in. And originally I had, you know, them in different places. And what's nice about Final Cut is you can easily just quick, click and drag them into someplace else if you want them someplace else. You can also keep to go a little further. You can keyframe it so they like move around if you want to, but that's a whole separate topic animation. Um, uh, I did the same process of lining up the audio. And so I just look for the beginning of the waveforms. I line them up um, so it sounds good by my ear. Um, and then what did I do? I don't remember what this step was. I think I started, sorry, I should have labeled them more than just two, three, four, five. Um, uh, what did I do here? I didn't do anything. Um, you faded in. Do you like fades and stuff? I didn't do any fades, no. Um, I think this is me just still putting it together. For this is where I did some cuts to the beginning. And then I didn't do a fade. I just had the sex one just come right in. Um, here is where I also, no, five. Five is where I did a little bit of audio. Um, in Final Cut, if you click on the, the sound icon up there, you could just do a quick like music enhance and it usually brings the audio way up. So then you go back and you can kind of fade it. You can do it, you can eyeball it a little bit. So you see where the, the waveform peaks out and get it at least uniform. And then you, you listen to what sounds good, what your, what your ear tells you. Um, and then what I also did here was I played with some panning. So I put um, the sax to the left, the guitar is on the right, the synth is on the left, sort of by where they are in the square. So like if you're doing like a whole bunch of vertical videos, you can play with the panning a little bit too. Um, I think with your voice, I kept it right in the middle because usually vocal line is just front and center. Yeah, and um, if you want to learn more about panning and things like that, uh, there will be videos in the future on the audio engineering career. I need to talk a little bit more about that. You know, all those things you learn in the different nooks and crannies, um, mm -hmm. uh, you can apply them throughout mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Yeah, basically my rule of thumb is like, if you were watching a live performance, where would people be located? So singers usually in the middle and then guitar sacks usually off to the sides. So, yeah. Yes, I've started doing, I guess, just hard left, hard right and center, just left, right, center, nothing really in between. Um, it gets confusing. I found like I enjoy that a little bit better um, and drums usually with the voice just sort of in the center. Mm -hmm. But if once you start listening to other um, things, you start to hear what other people do. But that's that's the different, that's a different video. Um, anyway, so we're left. I know I went through this pretty quickly because it's it's pretty much the same um, format um, going through and just lining them up, putting them where you want them to go. Um, the big difference that I had, um, or you know, some little differences are just like placement in the different different windows those are individual choices and then 
my my style is the is to see the grid um and um for me you know that's i think everybody has their own different eyeballs to it and what i like you can do you can actually easily change the colors of okay. it um and you can animate those too so like here and there like over time the color changes. change colors yeah um I like the purple. <laughs> I didn't mess with any reverb, but you can in Final Cut. Um, you don't have to export it. You can uh, mess with audio effects. If you go to video and audio, go down to audio. You could just add some predetermined things. Alien. Alien. I'll do that. Let's do it. Where was it? I don't remember where it was. Oh, right here. I'll add it to the saxophone because because I don't know what that's going to sound like. And then I think with your voice, Gabby, I think we should do helium. Oh my no, gosh! No monster, crazy. monster. Sorry. Ooh, something that con you know, um, say contrast. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it's going to sound like, but let's go for it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, but you can add all these, all the different things like EQ and um, have fun with that. that at the beginning there that was a mistake no it was a creative choice it's fine <laughs> uh it also changes the pitch though it's, it's really we're all great. about autonomy here you know that is true yes um it sounded beautiful with the headphones on um i don't know if you could say if, if the the stereo-ness comes through on zoom or not um but it does add a different element to it um, hearing it out of a different ear. Um, and if you, put it, if you put it on the wrong side, then you're watching, it's kind of trippy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. Nerdy thing to say. Um, and then from here, you just export it like any other video. Mm -hmm. And you export it. Um, there. Careless, careful whisperer. Careful whisperer. <laughs> 